This is Twit. Let's move along to our next question, which comes from Matthew. Uh, Matthew writes in and says, and I, I think there's a little bit of sarcasm here um, in, in this instance. It says, my darling wife occasionally leaves her purse behind when visiting her mother or her friends. The purse contains her wallet, her money, and her driver's license. So I bought her an AirTag to use with the Find My app on her iPhone. The separation alert works exactly the way it's built to work. As she drives away, it makes a teeny tiny little sound that she can't hear over the car's engine and displays a left behind message that she doesn't see because she's driving. Is there some way to replace these useless notifications with something else, such as a loud whoop whoop or other noise? Maybe using shortcuts or IFTTT, which is if this, then that, or some combination of the two. Uh, great question, Matthew. You basically are saying, look, um, I bought an AirTag and it has this great feature where when you move away from something, you get a notification from the Find My app that says, um, this item was left behind. And as far as I know, you didn't want this to be left behind at this location. So you should know that you left it behind at this location. Um, we have a guest visiting. And so we've been going to a lot of places and, you know, I've got different air tags in different places like my car, et cetera, et cetera. And so I leave some of them behind. And as I walk away from the car, bzz, up pops a little notification saying, hey, you left behind this and this uh, in that specific location. Very handy, very good. But as Matthew is pointing out, it is a little annoying that uh, it's not alerting in a way that is clear to Matthew's darling wife, um, who I'm going to refer to as Darla. So what Darla should do, or I guess, Matthew, if you're doing it on behalf of Darla, is to check a couple of things. And we're going to take a look at this. The first thing we want to do is hop into the settings app on the iPhone, and we want to scroll down to notifications. From notifications, we're going to scroll down until we get to, and this is the important thing, people might not know that uh, the app that is actually displaying notifications for uh, AirTag is the Find My app. So we need to find the Find My app here. And so I found the Find My app in the notifications section. And of course, allow notifications is going to be turned on. Uh, Darla was was getting the notifications as far as you know, but they just were not, uh, they were not, you know, making noise. The next thing that you want to do is make sure time sensitive notifications are turned on. Turn on time sensitive notifications. I'll repeat, turn on time sensitive notifications. Next, make sure that under alerts, you have all three turned on lock screen, notification center and banners. Those three all should be on. Next, under banner style, make sure it's not set to temporary. You want persistent. That is going to make sure that the notification shows up and it stays there until it's dismissed. After that, make sure sounds is toggled on. And then, and this is the one I love, make sure show in CarPlay is toggled on. Um, I have show on Mac as well because I have uh, the latest version of Mac OS running Mac OS Sequoia. And so this can forward notifications to the Mac, but that's not important for this. So show in CarPlay is turned on. And then here's something that you can go even further with. Under lock screen appearance, there are two options here that say notification grouping and show previews. Under show previews, you can change this from when unlocked to always. And what that means is when a find my notification appears, it won't hide what is happening on the lock screen. It will show the full notification even while the lock, uh, even while the phone is locked. And then under notification grouping, you can just leave that to automatic. That's that's what it's set to by default. Now, now that you've got the notifications set as you want them, uh, this is going to make sure that everything is coming through as much as possible. Your next step is to go into settings once again and tap on focus 
and then tap on driving. And once you're in driving, you want to make sure that you have uh, the proper settings for when this turns on automatically. Because if uh, Darla, you know, hops in the the car and the driving focus turns on, which it should, you know, if that's what you've got set up, which is what it sounds like, then you want to make sure that uh, activate with CarPlay is turned on. So let me uh, kind of step back. We went settings, we went focus, we went driving, we scrolled down to the bottom. And it says turn on automatically. We're going to tap on that section. And under activate, there's an option for automatically. There's an option for when connected to car Bluetooth. And there's an option for manually. I have when connected to car Bluetooth selected. And then beneath it, I have activate with CarPlay turned on. You want this turned on because that means that it is instead of using your car's speed uh, and what well, your phone's speed rather, and sort of velocity measurements to determine, oh, this person's probably in a vehicle right now. It will use the fact that CarPlay has been activated as the means of triggering this. And then now that we've got that all sorted, we're going to do one more thing. We are going to launch the shortcuts app. So we will find whoops, find the shortcuts app here and we will create a shortcut under automation. So I'll tap on automation and here what we want to do is hit the plus sign in the top right corner and scroll down until we get to uh, focus or rather driving. Uh, because it's showing all four of the focus modes that I have, one of which is driving. So I tap on driving. So it says when turning driving on, I can do that. Or I can also just choose when CarPlay connects. Either of these are fine. So if I tap when CarPlay connects, then I say run it immediately and I leave notify when run turned off. I hit next, and then the thing that I want to do is choose new blank automation. From here, I'm going to choose, or I'm going to type in announce. I'm going to search for announce and tap on that. And what this does is it says turn announce notifications on. I can tap done. So all of that, all of that that we just did does this one thing. It says if my car connects to CarPlay, then I want you to toggle on the feature called turn announce notifications on. Then you can set up one that says when CarPlay disconnects, turn announce notifications off. But what this does is it makes Siri actually announce notifications that are coming through. So find my will then be announced over the car speakers and you will have that notification letting you know you left your car behind. That said, <laughs> I love this. I want to go back to the chat here. Um, people have had some very good advice, which is that, hey, um, you could just put a post-it note in the car on the dashboard that says, do you have your purse? <laughs> that was from Scooter X. And um, let's see, somebody else said, um, well, yes, get into the habit. This is a good point, um, Wizardling. If you get into the habit of putting your car keys into your purse, you're never going to drive away without the, without the, the, the purse because your car keys are in there and you can't leave without your car keys. So that is an option um, that will help, you help uh, Darla, as we came up with, um, to remember the uh, stuff that gets left behind. So once again, uh, make sure check in your notifications and then you can create that automation uh, in the shortcuts app to automatically set announced notifications. Now I have to turn mine off because I don't need that. Uh, and so I don't want it announcing all of my notifications when I'm in the car. If you enjoyed what you just saw, well, there's more of it. It's all over at twit.tv or just click in the description and you can get links to this very episode.